Hey everybody, we are so glad that you are joining us today for our third session of our Mastering Your Family Meals. Um, I'm Megan Brothers and I'm the Health and Human Sciences Educator in Vanderburg County. I'm going to throw it over to our, my colleague Megan Jasperson to introduce herself. Hello everyone, my name is Megan Jasperson. I'm the Health and Human Sciences Educator in Perry and Spencer Counties for Purdue Extension. And today what we're going to be talking to you about is quick meals in under 20 minutes or less. So Megan is going to share with us some tips about how you can make that happen. And as she's talking, you guys can even set your timer. I'm actually going to show you um, from scratch how we can do a meal from start to finish in less than 20 minutes. I have literally done no additional prep besides pulling ingredients out of my cupboard. So um, I'm just going to get started browning some turkey while Megan's talking. Today we are going to be cooking a Fiesta skillet dinner. So I'm going to hand it back over to Megan and take it away. Great. So we need to talk a little bit. Um, hey, Megan, can you make me co-host so that I can screen share real quick? But part of what we need to do is talk about why this is important. So we know that big hot topics are how to make quick meals. And when you Google things or even looking on Pinterest, there's lots of questions and pins about quick and easy meals. Um, so we thought this would be a great um, resource for you guys and something really great to talk about um, to share how we could make that happen. So bear with us just a second. I don't know how to make you the host. You should click on my picture, the little three dots. Yeah. Okay. Or okay. go down to screen so share. There we go. We did it. You're good. Okay. Technical difficulties, but we are figuring it out. We're all learning with this process, right? Okay, so our goal is to talk about quick dinners under 20 minutes. So we know life is really a balancing act. So we have lots of things that we are trying to juggle, lots of things that we're trying to find balance with in our lives. And whether that be our jobs, our families, our, our children, our fur babies, our older parents or friends or neighbor, whatever it is, we have a lot of things that we're balancing. We might have a home that we're trying to take care of, bills that we have to get paid on time, food to put on the table, all kinds of things. We know that life is really a balancing act. So we have to figure out those priorities and where do we need to spend our time and where do we need to spend our efforts so that we can get a nice balance of life. Um, I recently heard Someone referred to it as not a work-life balance, but more of a work-life harmony. So figuring out not necessarily how to make it a perfect balance, but how to make it where it's working together and that we're not really stressed and really chaotic. So usually what happens when we are looking at this balancing act is the last thing that we're thinking about is that food that goes on our table. Um, so what do we do in that kid situation when we're, we're focusing on everything else that's in our lives, food and the food that we eat and what we put in our bodies usually goes last. So what that looks like then is that we eat out because there are so many options for eating out and there's so many options of convenience foods that it allows us and allows our brains to say, okay, I don't have to focus on the cooking piece because I can go to McDonald's or I can order a pizza or we can order, you know, takeout or whatever that is. So it gives us the ability to put it out of our minds. But I want us to think about what that means. Um, and what it means for you might be a little different from what, than what it might mean for me. Um, but we have to, we have to really take some time to think about this. So when we're eating out versus eating at home, Yes, it is absolutely more convenient to eat out most of the time. You know, it is something that somebody else is doing the cooking for us. Somebody else is putting the food together and prepping it and buying the supplies and all of that. 
So it allows us to, like I said, put it out of our mind and put that at the bottom of our balancing act or our priority list that we might have. But I want us to really think about the cost because if you really break down the cost of convenience foods, it is gonna cost you a lot more in the long term. Um, and really even in the short term. So I had taken, I had fallen into the trap of doing a lot of takeout and, and easy cooking and convenience foods. And what I found is once you really start thinking about how much you're actually spending on that food, you are not just paying for the food. So if you go to a grocery store, you're buying your food. But when you order takeout or when you eat out at a restaurant, you're paying for the food you're paying for the distribution, so probably delivery costs, you're paying for the, the workers there, you're paying for the packaging, you're paying for the cooking, you're paying for all of that other stuff too. Um, so it is gonna be more expensive to eat out food versus if you bought the same stuff and cooked it at home, which that's kind of the point is that it is taking that cooking piece out for you. But if you're looking at cutting costs, if you're looking at that budget, and your budget is causing that stress or your budget's not in balance, the first place that I recommend looking at is how much you're eating out. And really look not just at, oh, I'm spending $50 a week on eating out, but really looking at, okay, what am I buying for that money, right? Am I paying, am I paying $10 in delivery charges and I'm paying taxes and all of those kinds of things? So really take a look at what you're really spending on that convenience food. The other thing to really think about is the nutritional aspect of it. So there's a lot of research. We could spend a whole session talking about nutrition and mental health and nutrition and um, happiness and nutrition and, and life. But the point is when you're eating out, it's really difficult to find really good healthy meals when you're eating out. Um, Restaurants always, you know, if you eat at a restaurant, those portion sizes by themselves are just astronomical. But looking at the, the places, when I think about the places around my house to eat out at, it's, you can't find a healthy option. I mean, it's really difficult. And even the healthy options aren't necessarily healthy. They might be healthier, but they're not necessarily gonna give us what our body needs. And in that case, we're actually probably gonna eat more than if we were to cook at home. Because when we, when we eat really highly nutritious food that's really nutrient dense, you're gonna end up needing less of it to feel full and satisfied. So you're gonna get bigger, better bang for your buck in the long term with that. So think about all of those things as you're planning your budget. Megan spent, did a great job talking about meal planning and budgeting for food. So look at that eating out as you're, and really break it down and look at the cost of comparing eating out versus eating at home. So it's easy to say, yeah, you should definitely eat at home more. It's better for you, it's lower cost, but then you get into life and you're busy. So how do you really make this work? So I've got a few little hacks that I wanna talk about. The first one is to plan ahead. <laughs> so Megan talked about meal planning our first week. And it really does help to plan that ahead. It's difficult and it's a tough habit to start, but once you start it, it's so much easier. Um, my sister, as an example, has this great um, calendar and she just sits down with her daughter and my, my nephew when he was at home and not at school. Um, and they sat down and, and made plans for what they were gonna have each week and each night for dinner. And this was really focused on dinner, but you can do it for all your meals. You can start small. So I would start with maybe one meal if you don't do any planning. And really just look at what do you have in your cabinets? What do you have in your refrigerator? Uh, what do you have in your freezer? Make that plan, look at it. Um, and that'll help you when you are tired from working all day. You don't wanna sit down and cook anything. You don't wanna thaw that chicken breast because it's in the freezer. You don't wanna take the time to do that. So if you have a plan, you can plan for it and then you'll have everything you need and can cook much faster. Another thing that really helps is to make extra. So we talked about this again in week one where I had the big chicken that I cooked in the crock pot. So I have myself and my two and a half year old daughter at home. So a whole chicken's not gonna feed us for one meal. That's gonna be way more food. But when you're able to take that extra chicken 
and put it in the refrigerator, then I had lunch really easy because I just pulled out some of that chicken and made it into wraps or salad or whatever it was. And it was so much easier than, oh, well, chicken sounds good, but I don't have any chicken cooked. So it's all stuck in the freezer. I'm not gonna wait, I'm not gonna waste my time or take the time to thaw it out, then cook it and then have it ready. So if you make extra when you're doing chicken or when you're cooking anything, make extra, put it in the refrigerator, put it in the freezer. Um, that really helps so that you can just grab it out, thaw it out, cook it, whatever it is. Um, so another big debate that people have is fresh versus frozen versus canned food. So these, this can be really helpful if you're looking for a quick dinner fix or a quick lunch fix is to have frozen and canned foods on hand. What the, the saying, I think fresh is best, really might fit if you have fresh food that's in season. Um, however, industry standards and, and manufacturing has improved so much over the years that frozen food is almost exactly the same, if not actually a little bit more nutritious than if you were to buy only fresh produce. So when they do frozen food and even canned foods, they're picking the food at its ripest and then preserving it by freezing it or doing the canning process. So if you buy fresh food, if it's fresh and in season, it's gonna be highly nutritious and, and really good quality. But if you're buying fresh produce that's not in season, it's not necessarily gonna be as highly nutritious. Um, and usually it's more expensive too. So looking at those cost differences between fresh food versus frozen food versus canned food can really help you make those decisions and it's a lot better to have frozen and canned food on hand because it doesn't go bad as easily. It's meant to stay longer and be more shelf stable. So when you buy fresh food, it's going to go bad quicker. So if you don't use it quickly enough, you're just wasting your money that way. So think about that and look at those frozen and canned options for your fruits and vegetables especially, but even meats too. And you can buy like canned and frozen chicken and meats that are really easy to just heat up and go so that you don't have to thaw out a chicken breast and cook it and then have it ready. You can have, you know, already cooked chicken or already cooked um, even like beef and things like that, that you just thaw out and cook and you're ready to go. Um, the last hack is to get creative. So when we think about a meal and whether it's breakfast, lunch or dinner, we really, when we think about nutrition, we think about a balanced meal, it needs to follow the my plate, which are the five food groups that you can see there in a plate format. Um, so when you're thinking about putting a meal together, you know, we are, I think as a society, we see so many Facebook posts and Pinterest pins of these beautiful gourmet meals that took forever to put together and took a ton of ingredients. And that's just not necessarily the most realistic. So as you're thinking about how you're going to put your meal together, get creative. It doesn't have to be a gourmet meal every night. <laughs> you know, you can pick a base of some grains, a protein, some vegetables, maybe some dairy, and you've got a balanced meal. So grab what you have, get creative. You can, you can add different flavors by doing herbs and spices, or even with different sauces and things that will create that variety, but the basis of your meals doesn't have to be gourmet. It doesn't have to be really extensive. You can get those basic foundational kinds of things and create a pretty good meal with those. So with that, I am going to turn it back over to Megan, who's ready to show you what she's been working on. Okay, thanks Megan for those awesome tips. She provided a lot of really good information that we're actually just gonna put into practice right now. So as I said at the start, we are making a Fiesta skillet dinner and it really hits on some of the things that Megan just said. I really like this meal because when you're thinking about the my plate, it does hit all of those categories. So I'm gonna show you what we have going on here. Um, we have this meal calls for um, it actually calls for chicken, but since we already did chicken, Megan did that earlier in the series, we wanted to just show it with ground meat today. So I choose a lean ground turkey for a substitute, um, which I already browned in my pan. That takes about seven to 10 minutes to get um, nice and cooked. And then, um, so 
The beauty of this is that it's what I call a dump meal. All you're gonna do is throw it all together in a big skillet. So we have our meat, and then it also calls for frozen corn. So I've already measured out a cup and a half of frozen corn. I'm just gonna dump that in there. And Megan talked about the difference between frozen versus fresh versus can. Um, this is flash frozen, so it goes directly from the field to being frozen. So it locks in a lot of those nutrients and now it's in my skillet. Okay, so that's easy. Um, calls for black beans. This is a simple can of black beans. I did rinse it because um, when you go with the canned option, sometimes the sodium content is higher, but if you just drain it and give it a quick rinse, that will take care of that. So I'm gonna dump my beans in. And then it calls for some Mexican tomatoes. I chose um, diced with green chilies. There's a couple varieties, or if you are a gardener, this is a great way to use up some of those end of the season tomatoes. And then it calls for a tablespoon of chili powder. So I'm just gonna add that in and mix that all up. I've got my burner on medium low. And so we're just gonna let that heat up. The beauty of this is that my ground beef is already cooked and my ground turkey is already cooked, excuse me. Um, so we're just gonna mix that all together and let that heat up. And then the other ingredient that it calls for is um, whole grain rice. And so if you're wanting to go really instant, I recommend they make these packs. They're really easy to do. And they are only, it only takes 90 seconds. You can go with um, other varieties that take a little bit longer, but um, I'm gonna just pop this into my microwave for 90 seconds and let Megan um, show you a couple of additional handouts. Yes, thanks Megan. So I'm gonna show you the recipe that Megan is cooking today. Um, and as you can see from this, it's a little, let me zoom in just a little bit for us. Um, so the, I like this recipe, it's from Iowa State Extension, and it's great because it shows us exactly how much it costs per serving. So you can see really how inexpensive it is. Um, so you can always swap out some of those vegetable options there, and like Megan already you know, opted out of the chicken, she chose ground turkey instead. But the point is to have that protein. If you don't want meat, then you can, you can add more beans in there or add a different variety of beans as well. Um, to make it a vegetarian option. Um, and so it's only $1.26 per serving. And the serving size is a cup and a half of each of these. So that's a pretty good amount of food. It's really high in fiber, so it's gonna get you nice and full and, and keep you full. Um, but at $1.26 a serving, you can't really beat that, that cost, right? The other really cool thing is that this recipe freezes really well. So this has really good stable food that is gonna freeze well. So you can cook it. So I made, um, I actually tried this because we have to try recipes when we're, when we're doing things for you guys, right? Um, so I actually doubled it and I had food for like a week and a half. And it was awesome just to be able to pull it out, throw it, I did a salad one day, I did um, a wrap another day. So you can do all kinds of things with it to make it more exciting um, to use that option. So another couple handouts that I'm gonna show you guys real quick um, that are really great. They have recipes. Recipes are always really nice. Um, but this one from um, North Carolina Extension talks about one pot dinner. So you saw with Megan, she had two dishes. She had her skillet, her skillet that she browned in, her skillet that she put everything else in. Um, but it's really great when you're thinking about that time too that you're spending on cooking, you don't wanna do a whole bunch of dishes. So when we can get Easy one pot dinners, those are always really popular. So here's a couple of those that we'll share with you guys. And then this is another extension handout um, from Michigan State that talks a little bit more about why we wanna do these quick, easy meals. Um, and there's a couple recipes on there as well. And we'll, make, we'll get these to you guys. Um, and I do wanna show the, I wanna show you guys our evaluation. We do appreciate you guys um giving us feedback on our programming um so we've got this here i'm going to throw it in our chat box as well for you guys to be able to see um, that you can fill out this out for us and it gives us really great feedback to know how we're doing so i'm going to throw it back to you megan 
Okay, thank you, Megan. So as you can see, I just popped this instant rice into my microwave for 90 seconds and it's ready. There are other varieties. Next week, join us for um, stocking your pantry. I went to Sam's Club and I have like a 25 pound bag of whole grain rice that I got for like $8. So this is a really affordable food, really versatile. But if you're really looking for a quick meal, 90 seconds in the microwave, we're just gonna add that to our skillet and mix it in. And then we're gonna top that with half of a cup of cheddar cheese. And look at that. You've got a beautiful skillet meal to feed your family. And like Megan said, this is super versatile. Throw it in wraps, put it on salad, just eat it with chips, eat it as a taco bowl. It's awesome. Um, so with that, um, Megan threw the evaluation in the chat. I don't, if there's any um, questions, you can reach out to Megan and I directly. And um, if not, be sure to join us next week as we do discuss stocking your pantry and going through what some of those staples are that you should have in your kitchen. And we will be same time, same place, same Zoom link. Anything else to add? Thanks for joining us. Thanks everybody, have a great day.